fruit, fruity, 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 fruit. This potted history covers the county of Leicestershire and close neighbour Rutland. Rutland's small size of no more than 18 miles wide at any point has been in existence since the Doomsday Book, and in 1974 the Local Government Act made Rutland part of Leicestershire, and then in 1997 they regained their independence. Some of the railways pass through Rutland, so it is poignant to include them into this history. Although the county only has one station, it does contain some industrial archaeology, especially the impressive 82-arch Haringworth Viaduct. Leicestershire has a rich railway history. The last main line to be built, the Great Central, still has a heritage section here and is building to extend. The existing main line from St Pancras to the north, known as the Midland Main Line, currently operated by East Midlands Railway, and the East-West Birmingham to Stansted route passes through both counties and via Leicester City itself. The geology of Leicestershire is of granite, slate, cyanite, coal, sandstone and oolite in Rutland. Quarrying has been historic in the counties. All this extracted material needs to be transported to the building constructions of the world. Railways are expanding, with plans to reinstall the Ivanhoe line fully to Colville on the freight-only route from the Midland Main Line. It will include a new junction near to the Welford Road Rugby Stadium and the nearby football stadium. Just to confuse matters here, the rugby team has the official name of Leicester Football Club, whereas the soccer team is known as Leicester City Football Club. Leicester boasts having had the fourth oldest railway in the UK after the Stockton and Darlington in 1825, the Canterbury and Whitstable and the Liverpool to Manchester railways opened in 1830, followed by the Leicester to Swannington railway, which opened to traffic on Tuesday the 17th of July 1832. And by railway, I mean carriages drawn by steam locomotives along dedicated metal rails. Much of the East Midlands was carved up following the beaching report. However, there have been railways that have ceased to exist here long before Richard Beeching was out of short trousers. I will be preparing a number of videos of the disused lines and stations within the two counties, and these are highlighted here. The Leicester to Swannington Railway, which created the town of Colville, and traversed the second ever railway tunnel to be built, the mile-long Glenfield Tunnel, opened 1832, delivering coal directly into the city of Leicester at Westbridge, with stations at Glenfield, Ratby, Desford, Merry Lees, Thornton Lane, Bagworth, and finally Swannington. The existing Midland Main Line, then the Midland Counties Railway, originally connected Nottingham and Derby, then a spur from Long Eaton ran south to Leicester in 1840, calling at Kegworth, Hathen, Loughborough, barrow upon saw Sileby and Syston. After a six-week delay, due to wet weather, the line then extended southward to Rugby, via Wigston, Counterthorpe, Broughton Astley, Lear, Ullsthorpe, and through the Willy Tunnel to Rugby. The freight only spur from Wigston to Colville of 1844 via Kirby Muxlow, which now passes Leicester City Stadium. The railway joined the Leicester to Swannington, which had been taken over by the Midland Railway, who built this spur to attach the source of coal to the main line. Meanwhile, the 1846 Syston to Peterborough Railway connecting Leicestershire to Lincolnshire, called via Rearsby, Brooksby, Frisby, Asfordby, Melton Mowbray, Saxby, Wissendine, Oakham, and Manton, and all stations to Stamford. 
The Midland Railway extended the Leicester to Swannington line to Burton-upon-Trent in 1849, calling at new stations on the original line at Braunston, Bagworth and Ellistown, and extending to Burton via Ashby de la Zouch, Moira, Gresley and Burton-upon-Trent. Barden Hill and Colville had been added by the previous owners. Stamford was connected again in May 1850 via the first station to Grace Market Harborough on the Rugby to Stamford Railway via Welford, Lubenham, Market Harborough, Ashley and Weston, Rockingham, Seaton, Moorcott, Luffenham and Ketton and Collie Weston. The Ambergate, Nottingham, Boston and Eastern Junction Railway connected Grantham and Nottingham in July 1850, with a small section passing through Leicestershire and creating a station at Bottersford in the very north of the county. A north curve at Syston was added in 1854, allowing trains to travel from Loughborough to Melton Mowbray without having to turn at Leicester. In 1856, Stamford was connected with Essendine and the East Coast Main Line calling at Rye Hall and Belmsthorpe. This short line, with the exception of Stamford, was wholly in Rutland. In 1857, the Midland Counties Railway opened the existing Midland Main Line operated by East Midlands Rail, extending operations from Leicester to the second station at Market Harborough through to Hitchin via Kettering and Bedford. Two years later, the Midland Counties Railway opened a short line from near Sileby to the Mount Sorrel Quarry, which is today occupied by a conveyor belt owned and operated by Tarmac. Railway construction continued in Leicestershire, and in 1861, the South Leicestershire Railway connected Nuneaton with Hinckley, and three years later extended into Leicester, via Elmsthorpe, Croft, Narborough, Blaby and Wigston. Then came the Melbourne Line connecting Derby to Colville via Tong, Worthington and Ashby de la Zouch in 1868. The line was used as a military training centre for World War II's D-Day landings. Colville gained further railways in 1873. Nuneaton connected with Burton-upon-Trent via Market, Bosworth and Shackerstone. From Shackerstone Junction, one branch went northeast via Colville with stations at Heather and Ibstock, Hugglescote and Moira. The other went northwest via Snarestone, Meesham, Donisthorpe and Overseal and a loop north of Overseal returned to the Colville branch. Today, the Shackerstone to Shenton section is the Battlefield Heritage Line, and part of the spur to Colville is their sidings. In 1875, a company was formed, and a lease of the ironstone mining around Holwell was obtained. In the following year, a privately owned mineral branch line was constructed from Holwell and reached the Midland, Nottingham and Melton line near Asfordby. The branch included many single-track spurs to each of the ironstone quarries. The railway network continued its expansion next from the Great Northern and London and North Western Joint Railway Company. Opened in 1879 with some very impressive industrial heritage, Newark was connected initially to Melton Mowbray, then onward to Market Harborough via Wellham Junction. Stations on the route include the relocated Bottesford, Red Mile, Bingham Road, Barnstone, Harby, Long Clawson, Scalford, Melton Mowbray, Great Dalby, John O'Gaunt, Tilton, East Norton, Hallerton and Medbourne. Nottingham was reached from Melton Mowbray in February 1880 via Old Dalby on what is now Network Rail's test track where London Underground's S-Stock and High Speed 1's Javelin trains were tested. This also provided an additional route to the railway for the Holwell Mineral Line. Less than a month later, the Midland Counties Railway joined Oakham to Kettering, completing the loop for an alternative route to Leicester. From Oakham, it passed through the Manton Tunnel near Wing, over the Welland River at Haringworth Viaduct, and on to Corby and Kettering via Luffenham. A connection was made to Leicester via John O'Gaunt, 
also known as Mayfield Junction, connecting to the city in 1882, calling at Lewesby, Ingersby, Thurnby and Scraptoft, Humberston Road, and into Leicester at Belgrave Road. This branch was operated by Great Northern Railway only. The following year saw some major projects completed and opened to the public. Firstly, the Charnwood Forest Railway from Derby Road, Loughborough, connecting to Colville via Snell's Nook, Shepshed, Gracedew, Thringstone and Whittick. The woods were heavily loaded with bluebells, hence the line became known as the Bluebell Line. Secondly, in the same year, the Great Northern and North Western Railway joint lines connected Leicester to Peterborough via a new route at Jonagall Junction, with an additional spur at Wellham Junction, which included Medbourne Station. Lastly, on the same line, but north of Milton Mowbray, a branch from the eastern end of the Holwell Mineral Line was extended to Waltham on the Wolds. Extended another two miles in 1884 to Eastern, it was used for freight and very occasional passenger service for unusual events, such as racing meets at nearby Croston Park. It got as far as Eastwell in 1885, but the extension was never used. Iron road construction slowed down in the counties, but in Rutland in 1894, extensions to Uppingham from Seaton and to Cottesmore from Ashwell were created. This latter section is currently occupied by the Roxby Rail Heritage Line. Also, the Midland connected to the Midland and Great Northern Joint Railway from Saxby to the east of Melton Mowbray, passing through Edmonthorpe and Wymondham and onward to Bourne and Lincoln. In 1898, the Mount Sorrel branch line was extended to Switzerland. Here it met the construction of Britain's last mainline railway of the steam age, the Great Central, from Yorkshire to Marylebone. The line called at Loughborough, Corn and Woodhouse, Rothley, Belgrave and Burstall, Leicester, Whetstone, Ashby Magna and Lutterworth, and then on to Rugby. A section of this line now forms the Great Central Heritage Line from Burstall to Loughborough and is being extended to just south of Nottingham. The 20th century saw no more track building beyond these 11 railway companies operating in the counties. Many railways closed underperforming stations, usually due to low passenger numbers and not just because of beaching. Some railways made huge losses and stations were being closed as early as the 1920s. Though track remained and the routes were not officially closed, sparing some goods workings and through routes. The next major point in the timeline of the county's railways was in the 1923 grouping, when railways were merged to create the Big Four, which consisted of the Great Western Railway and the Southern Railway, and in Leicestershire and Rutland, the London, Midland and Scottish, the London and North Eastern Railway, and the two joint lines of the Midden and Great Northern, and the Great Northern and London North Western, who continued to operate as independent railways. All these, in turn, were swallowed up in the creation of the British Railway Commission in 1947. The Conservatives had been in power since May 1955. The majority was slim, as it was for the election before, where Labour had won. The country was still recovering from the war, most notably from the Lend-Lease Act when the UK borrowed $6.2 billion from the US and Canada in order to pay for materials required to complete the war to a satisfactory conclusion. In October 1964, Labour won the election, but in the preceding years the Tories had appointed Dr Beeching as the chair of the British Transport Commission. This organisation, whose rail department operated as British Railways, published its 1955 modernisation plan, which included the closure of many of Britain's railways, but also dieselisation to replace steam, track renewal works including resignalling, and the building of large-scale depots capable of handling the growing freight traffic. In all, 7,500 diesel vehicles of locomotives and multiple units were to be ordered over a decade. 
Between 1950 and 1962, British Railways had authorised the closure of some 4,988 kilometres of railways. In 1963, Beeching published The Reshaping of British Railways, which had been written from the perspective of a business leader, and cutting out the money losses in order to turn a profit, or at least halt the 500 million debt the Transport Commission had accumulated. Beeching also published one for the roads in 1965, which recommended improved bus service but was promptly ignored by government. Prior to Beeching's publication, the 1962 Transport Act had dissolved the British Transport Commission and formed the British Railways Board, whose main aim was to change from a nationally supported system which provided transport to communities throughout the country to one of profitability and the swallowing of its debt by the Treasury. Subsidisation was intended tended to be a thing of the past. In 1966, following threatened usurps by his backbenchers, Harold Wilson identified economic utility as the guide to closure versus commercial viability. This change of heart saved approximately 4,800 kilometres of track from closure, and some of them which were not profitable were further protected with subsidisation under the Transport Act of 1968. Despite this turnaround, between 1963 and 1973, 6,540 kilometres of railway assets were taken out of use. So, briefly, the completion of railway building in the two counties resulted in 11 railway companies merging into five separate entities at the time of the 1923 grouping which saw the arrival of the Big Four. Onward to 1947 and the formation of the British Transport Commission and the creating of British Railways. During the post-war period, there were closures on several branch lines and random stations prior to the publication of the reshaping of British Railways. After 1963, the Beeching Axe swept its shadow over Leicestershire and Rutland, leaving a whole host of steel rails which were lifted over time to the shape of the railway map we have today, whether in public or private ownership. It is worth mentioning here that Beeching was a pawn of the government. He openly stated that whilst he did not regret his report, he added that he would be the scapegoat of BR's decision for many years to come. Do you feel Beeching was hard done by, or was he just a rogue? Do you know Leicestershire and the Lost Railways? Please leave a comment below and subscribe to further videos on this subject. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did compiling it.